Hello friends, welcome back to the channel for part two of my interview with Shauna Ristic. Part one will be linked in the description so you can check that out where she shares her near-death experience. Today we're going to do a Q&A and we're just going to pick up where we left off yesterday transitioning into our conversation about near-death experiences and their message in general. Then we proceed into a Q&A where I ask her about walk-ins. She's the first person that I've interviewed that has ever mentioned walk-ins. Her links will be in the description, her website, if you'd like to get in touch with her. Thank you for watching. here, Shauna. That's, that's, I think I pretty much covered the whole story. It's pretty long because 20 something years is a long time to integrate this and to try to figure out how to talk about it. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing Shauna. And I can also relate to that because I think it took, well, I think it took me 10 years to talk about my experience. Um, cause you don't even know what to do with it yourself. At least I didn't let alone. Yeah. I hadn't realized you'd had an experience. So yay. Yeah. I didn't, I don't, as far as I know, I wasn't dead, so I don't call it a near death experience, but it shares a virtually transformative things. experience. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. so anyway. yeah and, and thank God that's happening more and more these days. Frankly, there are a lot of people who are having those spirit that the veil between the sides is becoming so much thinner, and there's so many more people who are waking up and having those kind of experiences. And thank God you didn't have to die to have it, right? It's, it's a lot. Yeah. You didn't have to die to have it. Totally. Yeah. It's, it's a lot less damage to your body. <laughs> And what's amazing to me is the consistency of the messages that are coming through. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Well, it just seems to me in my study, and of course, I've only read or listened to so many stories, but it just seems very consistent that it's all about love, that we chose this life. We're here for a reason. The divine is in everyone and everything. And mm -hmm. Um, it's really about love is what it seems to boil down to. It is. It is. And yeah. I, I would say that's totally consistent. But something that's really interesting about that, that I've sort of come to understand in my work with all this is that there are also the, because everybody thinks, okay, so as soon as I die, I just go back to love and it's all beautiful, but it's not even that easy sometimes. I mean, it is, but we also have work to do here because there's so many people here who have, as I say, got stuck here. You know, for whatever reason they came here originally, then you have experiences and you create attachments and things that they can't let go of. You know, I've seen people who who were maybe deceased on the other side, but they were so attached to the people here that they were committed to not transitioning so that they could stay with them, right? That's sometimes you have people who are stuck into whatever attachment, houses, places, people, things, that they get stuck, you know, or we have people who maybe die and go through some of the, the bardos, the stages of letting go of this lifetime, but then they come to some point where they're not able to let go. And it's like they cycle back around and come back in to relive and to deal with whatever they, they needed to finish up. And it just feels like there's a lot of people on the planet who have been in samsara, who have been cycling, and that, you know, at least I feel like that's part of what I came to do was to sort of help liberate that. You know, help people just move a little bit closer to that liberation of finding their way to go home, to that love that it's really the truth, right? It's interesting that you would bring that up because more and more I'm getting people asking me this question if we're somehow trapped here. And if people even ask me if the higher power is um maybe not so good and sort of cycling us back in here to feed off of our negative energy or something like <laughs> the matrix. That. Yep. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I think that the higher power is not somebody up there. It's not a person with long hair going good, bad, good, mm -hmm. bad. I think that it's, it's a frequency, it's a vibration and it's the vibration of creation, right? And it launched us out there and it's our job to find our way back to it right? And it's more, it's not ambivalent as in like, doesn't care. It's very loving and very caring, but it doesn't interfere with our free will, right? And so people do get stuck here and recycle around, but it's up to each of us to do what we can in this lifetime to liberate your consciousness, to move to higher levels of frequency, um, to confront and have the courage to move through whatever it is that is causing you to contract and hold back 
right? And to step more into your light and to be that love and light on earth. That's what we, you know, that's really what we came to do is to try to find our way back to that here. It's just that it's hard, right? And there's so many people in so many different frequencies and so many different levels of consciousness that it becomes really, really, really crazy sometimes, right? And, and that's our challenge, right? But it's not that God's like, oh, let's put him back in and watch what happens, in my opinion. It's, it's more creation. And then we come here and for whatever reason we came to do, and oftentimes because of those hardships and because of the, the challenges of life school, as we say, then a lot of times people get really, they forget who they are, basically, forget who we are. And it's our job then to try to remember who we are. And we have lots of opportunities to remember that. Lots of opportunities every day. Lots of opportunities every day to remember who we are. Right? And, and that's the goal is to remember who you are, that love, right? Yeah. You know, and some people forget and you can see it, you know, in, in people and you can feel it in energies that there are some people who are really lost. Mm -hmm. They forgot. And all you can do is pray for them and keep working on yourself because the more we work on ourselves, the more we remember who we are, then we can be that energy. You can be that love. And then you don't have to give it or take it. It doesn't become this transaction like we think love is. It just becomes being that frequency. And then everybody who's around you benefits from it. And you don't lose anything when those people go. You can just, I love you. And I hope you find your way. I love that way of describing it. So early in your experience you mentioned the possibility of walk-ins when your council was debating should you stay or go do you think that's something that happens and how often does it happen hmm. well it didn't happen in my case um pretty sure i've really sat with that idea because i was like oh did that happen but i think it's a telltale sign when you have when you can access memories still from childhood that's usually a pretty pretty good sign that it didn't happen. I do have a friend, a couple of friends, who really convinced it that they were walk-ins. They have no memories from childhood. And um, there was a traumatic, you know, sort of event that happened, and they were very different afterwards. Um, and that's, that's sort of a sign of that. Um, I don't know how often it happens. I don't think I could quantify that. Mm -hmm. But... I think it's really a negotiation between the soul that's in the body and their guides and those, you know, on the other side that are supporting them and, and their, their decision to be here or not, right? Or to let something else take their place. I listened to your interview with Jeff Mara, and I remember you saying that at some point, and I don't remember if this was in your, your near-death experience or if it was something that happened afterwards. But you mentioned that you saw the, or you experienced the truth or the presence behind it all. And so I wanted to ask you, what is the truth? How do you describe that? Mm, it's like a vibration. It's sort of like a hum or a light or whatever you want to, whatever way your senses can perceive it. But it's, it's a vibration and it's that love vibration. But, you know, on earth, we've kind of created this funny thing about love. Like we think that love is like this thing that you tangibly either take or you give or you hold on to or you keep it away. And it's so silly. It's not that at all. I mean, love really is a frequency. It's just something that you hold and that you be a part of, right? And then, like I said, you know, when you hold that around you, everybody benefits, right? But that, that truth of it all is that. And it's like, you know, those moments when you're in the flow, like where everything just seems to go seamlessly and suddenly like things are just opening up around you and you really feel like you're in this flow. That's it. That's, that's like that love vibration. That's it. That's that, that feeling of ease and flow and openness. And there are times when there's contraction and okay, so now there's something for me to look at and to work through so that I can move back into ease and flow and into that loving vibration. But even when we're in contraction, that frequency is there. And if you notice it, it's usually there even more strongly you'll feel it and it's almost like it can feel kind of like oh, this heavy presence why is this hate weighing down on me but you know you just want it, it wants you to be liberated right and move back into resonance with it rather than dissonance mm -hmm. into harmony you mentioned that you learned a lot about how to handle anxiety from personal experience mm -hmm. so i was wondering do you have any advice for people because i know there's a lot of people dealing with anxiety right now mm -hmm. Um, so breathing, 
<laughs> I think that's one that everybody says is just focusing on your breath is a really good one and taking a break, like noticing it. The biggest challenge with anxiety is noticing it when it starts and not when you're in the middle of an anxiety attack, but noticing it right as it first starts, right? And, and then doing taking control of your mind, right? We as these beings, we seem to think that our mind is the one that controls everything. We seem to think that, you know, Everything we think is who we are. And that's craziness. It's like saying the motor drives the car. The motor doesn't make the car go. The human makes the car go. You make the car go, right? So once we can really acknowledge that we're the one driving the car, then noticing when the mind, the mind just does what it does. The mind's job is to keep you safe, right? And it, and to be sort of this way of, especially with orientation to keeping the body safe so that we have a place to stay here on earth, right? And so it's just going to run these programs and patterns that it's learned from the beginning of your life here, if not even before, in order to keep you safe, right? And it's like, it's like water flowing through the sand to the ocean. It'll take the same rut every time until you stop it and make it go somewhere else, right? So it's really about noticing what your mind is doing, starting to get in control of your thoughts, right? Not control. I'm not thinking... Like, I love it when we all try to learn to meditate. The thoughts, the thoughts, the thoughts. Darn, I'm thinking about thoughts. I'm thinking about thinking about thoughts. <laughs> but it's really just recognizing that you're this observer of the thoughts and that you get to choose where to orient your thoughts. Even if you have to grab the handlebars and be like, hey, we're not going to go there in that panic. We're going to look at that squirrel, right? You know, or whatever you have to do, right? Go for a walk. Whatever you have to do to break it to get control of the thoughts again so that they're not the ones that are just going in their crazy spin because once they get in the spin it's really hard to get control of them right so for me that was the biggest biggest thing was just to start to recognize for instance I was driving home from work one day and I lived in this apartment complex that I didn't really care for um, and I was really tired of living in it and it was loud and noisy and it was hard to be there with a child and husband and family life and a cat and all this stuff. And, um, and I remember driving in and I was like, you know, it's really not that bad here. It's really beautiful. And then I was kind of like, around, and then my mind goes, yeah, but it's, it's it. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And when and rent's coming up, when is rent due? Do you have rent? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. What, you know, and it just started. And I was like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. I know that pattern. That's that panic pattern. <laughs> look, look, there's the squirrel. <laughs> look, it's running up that pretty tree over there. <laughs> you just do what you have to do, but you have to first recognize when the snowball's starting, right? And grab a hold of it and shift it. You know, that's that's the, the first thing to do. And well, you know, maybe not the first thing, maybe the first thing is to recognize you're not your thoughts and that you can take control of those and that your thoughts are just doing, your mind is just doing what it does to keep you safe. Even if it means it has to hit the ignite the anxiety and the adrenaline in the body to make you run from whatever perceived tiger is happening, right? So just notice that you are not the thoughts and that you are the one who are observing the thoughts. And here they are and they all have all their ideas and all their opinions and all this stuff, but who's noticing that? So being the noticer and then noticing that you can be kind with your mind. You know, you don't have to be strict. I mean, it's good to be strict too sometimes, but hey, mind, did you forget we're doing it differently this time? We're not going down that snowball. You know, look over here and look at that, you know, or let's turn on the music and sing to the song or whatever else, you know, it takes to bring the mind back into harmony with the body and back in harmony with the spirit self that you really are. Well, Shauna, would you like to share and where people could find you if they'd like to work with you or any other projects you have going on that you'd like people to know about? Um, sure, you can reach me at my website. It's probably the best place, www.chanaristic.com. Um, you can look online there too, if you wanna book a session, it's all linked up with my calendar. Um, and projects, I have a series of workshops I'm offering. Uh, I'm about halfway through the first one, so it's been going and I, um, but the second and third one will be coming up in a couple months um, called Your Unique Vibration. Uh, it came from uh, clients asking me how to do what I do. And then I had to really start analyzing, well, what is it that I do? And finding words for that. And it's created this whole workshop. Um, the first workshop is Your Unique Vibration. 
It's about really um, connecting in with your own vibration because you have to really know where you are in order to know, be able to work with other people's energy or to be able to work with other non-physical energy. You have to be here and know you. So that's the first one. And that's what we're about halfway through. And then the, although um, I've been recording it, so if someone wants to jump in there, they, we could probably make that happen. And then the second one is your vibration and others, like other people. We work with that dynamic. And then the third one is your vibration and the numbers. So that's, that's what I'm mostly working on now is getting that going. And, um, and then TBA uh, in the future, um, looking at maybe creating a school here in Santa Cruz. Wonderful. Wow. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story and your wisdom with us. Are there any final words that you'd like to say before we go? Um, you can do this. You know, everybody's so full of doubt and so full of um, busy feeling unstable in these times and busy either saying something's wrong with me or something wrong with you and something needs to change. But if we could all just sort of drop in here, because you're really okay. And just allowing yourself to be in that space, that okayness for a while, rather than than the fear. Um, then you'll move closer to that love space that you really are. Thank you so much, Shauna. Blessings. <laughs>